welcome on this very rainy morning. Thank you all for braving it out on this cold, rainy morning. My name is Suzanne Rizzo, and I am the former co-chair of the Nile Tees Hall Conference Organizing Committee for last year's conference. I'm so pleased to see you all here, and it is my honor to welcome you all to the opening ceremony of the 20th annual Nile Tesaw Conference 2016. We have an exciting panel of distinguished professionals here to share some remarks with you during this opening ceremony. We thank them for their continuous support of the conference. First, I would like to invite to the podium Dr. Nathaniel Bowditch, Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences here at AUC. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Thank you all. And again, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you. Uh, my name is Nate Bowditch. I'm the Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. It's a mouthful. Um, it is terrible weather out there. I was, I was just skiing in Italy, celebrating my 25th anniversary, and I thought it was cold there in the mountains, and I came back, it's even colder and wetter here. So um, I know it was difficult to get here. I really appreciate you being here. I'm very pleased. I'm also honored to be invited. Um, I enjoy these events every year. I, this is a remarkable and important conference, and I love participating. So thank you for having me, all of you. Um, the school that I'm in, Haas, has a long tradition of providing MA level teacher training uh, and professional development through our MA TEFL program, which was founded in 1966 and then recently renamed uh, MA TESOL. And that's in the Department of Applied and Linguistics in Haas. And 1966, just that's 50 years ago, uh, we've been doing this here at AUC. I know because that's my year I was born as well. So congratulations. This is a remarkable achievement. Um, at this 20th anniversary event, I'm sure many of you will find it sort of evocative of fond memories of Niall Tesol conferences of the past, memories of the downtown campus, of the fountain area, of the tennis courts, of the traffic and noise just on the other side of the wall. Um, I remember the first time, I think eight years ago, I was teaching down on the Tahrir campus and I first heard of the Nile TESOL conference and I had no idea what TESOL was and really no idea what this is about and I think it's quite remarkable that we're all here in 2016, 20 years after the first conference. Very impressive. One thing that hasn't changed, all the times and the location, the venue has changed, is the fundamental motivations behind and objectives of this conference. The Nile TESOL organization and conference is a very important means of professional development for teachers in Egypt. This is one of the annual events to which every serious pedagogy and language professor in the, in the region is familiar with. It's a destination, it's a place to network, to reach out, and to stay up to speed on best practices uh, and the future of TESOL in the region. But the Nile TESOL conference isn't only AUC giving to Egypt and the region. Uh, it's good for AUC as well. It offers networking opportunities for our MA students, for our fellows, English teaching faculty in the ALI and, and in the ELI and the Department of Rhetoric Composition and the School of Continuing Education. It opens new doors and provides opportunities for these AUC-based faculty and students to broaden their perspectives and learn about English teaching situations across Egypt. I should add, by the way, myself being from out of Egypt and clearly not an Egyptian. This is especially important for people like me who need to understand where we are and what's happening here. So this is very important, I think, in both directions. It's good for AUC and I think it's good for all of us. You're not here to see me, so I will wrap up and turn it over to my competent friends who know actually what you guys do far better than I do. But I wanted to say one thing in closing. I want to thank you all for the work that you are doing. Yesterday was an important, if complicated, anniversary. I'm sure most of you, like me, spent much of the day reflecting on what we, Egypt, and the region have gone through in the last five years. And also thinking about where we're going and where we're going to be. I can guarantee that no matter what happens, the only way progress will be made in Egypt and in the region is through two things education 
and communication, collaboration, and creation. What this means is that the work that all of you are doing is some of the foundational work on which the future of Egypt will be built. So don't forget this. You are doing important work. And for that, I thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Have a great conference and uh, be well. Thank you very much, Dr. Bowditch. Next, I invite to the podium Dr. Hada Aoshimi, Associate Dean of the Academy of the Liberal Arts here at AUC. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the 20th Nile TESOL conference. I am honored to be here. My name is uh, Reda El Shimi. I am the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Dean Robert Switzer, the Dean of Undergraduate Studies. Uh, he is delayed in the great big storm in Washington, D.C., so, and he would have loved to be here. Um, the Office of the Dean of Undergraduate Studies is the big umbrella for many programs here at AUC, and the major one is the Academy of Liberal Arts. Uh, the Academy of Liberal Arts uh, houses three departments, Department of English Language Instruction, Department of Rhetoric and Composition, and Department of Arabic Language Instruction. What these three departments have in common is that they initiate freshman students into university life and teach them a wide variety of courses that aim to help them connect the different courses in their educational experience and make meaning of the different bits and pieces, make connections, uh, transfer learning, uh, and it starts many times, the students start in the Department of English Language Instruction and then the Department of Rhetoric and Composition. And uh, they are introduced to uh, language and communication that will carry them through their academic years at AUC and beyond. Um, in order to do that and to uh, give them this integrated learning experience, our teachers, many of which are organizing this conference and are presenting uh, here, um, are the leaders in the region of engaged pedagogies, of um, uh, making sure that activities are student-centered, that course designs are, are relevant to the students' lives, that there are ever-changing things to learn in the classroom so that the students um, understand the relevance of their learning and their use, how they can use it in the real world. Um, they teach students to reflect on their learning and do self-assessment. Uh, it is those teachers that collaborate to bring together an event like this, um, which is why it is connected so closely to the values of AUC and the values of the Academy of Liberal Arts. Um, this conference is very important, as uh, Dean Bowditch uh, mentioned, to AUC because it embodies the values of lifelong learning that, that help all students across Egypt and the region um, mobilize their learning to make it meaningful for their country and for others, for their communities. Um, I am very impressed with how far this conference uh, has come along. I believe, uh, I am a, an English language teacher myself originally, and I believe I actually uh, presented in the first or second, uh, uh, it was called the uh, skills conference uh, at that time. And it always blows me away how far, um, you know, this, um, very motivated, very committed community of English language teachers 
and educators come together and create magic and keep the momentum going year after year after year. Uh, when I was presenting um, 20 years ago, uh, it was, I, I, I recall it was a workshop about uh, teaching students vocabulary. And um, at that point, it, it was very exciting. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm uh, along with, with uh, you know, how thinking has changed, so the, the conference has integrated all the skills now, and there is uh, a lot of talk about student-centeredness and, and uh, engagement and uh, very cutting-edge uh, pedagogy. So I, I am very proud to have been um, uh, partner with some of the great people who have made uh, this progress. At this time, uh, especially in Egypt, when public education seems to be going through major crises, both in quality and in resources, um, it is in a community like this where the sparks are created that will uh, ignite new energy and, and fuel change for the future. Uh, you should all be very proud of contributing to this uh, remarkable event. Um, there is a very exciting program ahead, so I just want to congratulate you and welcome you to the 20th AUC Nile TESOL. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Elshimi. I would like to next invite Dr. Mariam Osman, president of Nile TESOL, to share some remarks. Good morning. Um, dear fellow Nile TESOL members, colleagues, conference attendees, and distinguished guests. Welcome to the 20th annual Nile TESOL conference, the theme of which is best practices in TESOL, communicate, collaborate, create. As you can see, this is a particularly auspicious occasion for us at Nile TESOL, as it marks a milestone in the history of our organization, namely our 20th conference. What has now become known both nationally and internationally as the Nile TESOL conference with its diverse topics covering a multitude of disciplines originated, as Rada said, 20 years ago as a small local conference entitled the EFL Skills Conference, where all the presentations given at each conference revolved around one skill. 20 years later, we have certainly come a long way. As you can well imagine, organizing a conference of this size does not happen without the dedicated work of numerous people, all of whom volunteer their time to serve the EFL profession in Egypt in particular and in the region in general, be they those serving on the conference organizing committee or various members of the School of Continuing Education and the American University in Cairo in general. I would like to recognize the tireless efforts of this year's conference co-chairs, Alexander Luko and May Magdi, as well as those of the members of the conference organizing committee who have done a wonderful job of creating new initiatives in addition to leading and coordinating the various people involved and following up on their various tasks to the minutest detail to ensure the smooth running of this operation. It is mainly their indefatigable commi commitment and sheer hard work throughout the past year which are responsible for the conference we are inaugurating today. Co-sponsoring this conference with Niall Tisol is the School of Continuing Education under the leadership of uh, Dean uh, uh, Dina at the American University in Cairo which plays a central role in helping to bring this conference to fruition. Without their support, both financial as well as logistical, such a conference held at this state-of-the-art venue would not have been possible. I would also like to thank our partners and conference sponsors who enable us to provide numerous professional development opportunities to all those here in Egypt working with us in the field of English language teaching and teaching through the medium of English. 
These highly appreciated and esteemed partners and sponsors are the American Regional English Language Office, AMIDIS, the British Council, Cambridge University Press, IDP Education IELTS, the International Language Bookshop, uh, ILB, Macmillan Education Egypt, Oxford University Press, Sphinx Publishing, Pearson Education, Unlimited Press, and Nahdit Masr. Attending international conferences such as the Nile TESOL Conference offers many valuable opportunities, two of which are the opportunity to network with colleagues from around the world, in addition to the opportunity to peruse the latest materials and many services made available by our sponsors and participating publishers. You are kindly invited to stop by their many booths to see what they have to offer in those respects. By taking a look at our program book for this year's conference, you will see that we have an alignment of invited luminaries in the field of English language teaching, whose presentations and workshops will help us explore this year's conference theme. I do hope you will avail yourselves of this wonderful opportunity by attending their presentations and workshops. In addition, I also invite you to attend a sampling of the various presentation formats available at this conference, such as a 20 by 20 presentation, a poster session, a publisher session, a panel discussion, a teaching without tech session, an e-community session, a colloquium featuring a panel discussion among the invited speakers, or a current session or workshop by one of our own Nile TESOL members. On behalf of the Nile TESOL Board of Directors and the 2016 Conference Organizing Committee, I wish you a very fruit fruitful and enjoyable time at the conference. Thank you. Many thanks, Dr. Osma. As you all may know, we celebrate 20 years of conferences this year. In order to mark this event, three speakers, Dr. Dina Bore, Dean of the School of Continuing Education at AUC, Claire, Carol Clark, Senior Instructor in the Department of English Language Instruction, AUC, and Rania Jabber, Senior Instructor too, and also in the Department of English Language Instruction at AUC. They will give some remarks regarding their experiences at, the, at this conference through the years. To begin with, please join me in welcoming to our podium our very own Dr. Dina Bore, Dean of the School of Continuing Education at AUC, past president of, Nile, of TESOL International Association, and one of the founding members of Nile TESOL Organization and the annual conference. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stand here for obvious reasons. If, you, if I stand there, you won't see me. I'm going to start to you know, every one of us, we have different roles in life. So one of my roles, I'll say welcome, as the Dean of the School of Continuing Education, welcome to this wonderful conference. And I'm so proud to see how many of you brave the rain and the cold to come today. Um, I admire you, and thank you for coming. And as Amanda um, said, I'm looking forward to the magic of the two days. I love conferences, and I'm sure you know, those of us who are here are one community that absolutely enjoyed um, being here together in spite of the rain and cold. Now I'm going to work, remove my deep hat and then go to my other hat, which is being a TESOL professional, which is what I love and what is intrinsic to me. And I'm very sorry uh, to be up to my hands, Alexander Kuchu, and uh, my MIT, the full chair of the talk to you today about my memories and to reflect back on the 20 years. You know, when we talk about 20 years, it's always very tricky because um, I guess conditions of age. Of course, you know that I, 20 years when I started, I was still in school. So always keep that in mind. Um, but it is another honor that it is wonderful to be present at the birth of something. So I was present at the birth of the conference called the AUC EFL Skills Conference. And this was the precursor, it was the conference that used to be called that and now it's called the Nile Conference. I was here 
It was at the Bacchary campus. There was no campus here in 1994 when it was born. And it has been my honor to be involved with it ever since. Um, what happened was, my first conference in my career was in 1990 when I went to TESOL International in San Francisco in the United States. And I was hooked. The magic of TESOL International was amazing. And when I came back to Egypt, and it wasn't only me, by the way, myself and many of my colleagues, including uh, my wonderful friend uh, and mentor, Michael Lawrence, and others, we wanted to bring back the experience of TESOL International to Egypt. Because what we experienced was pretty amazing, and we felt that if we were privileged enough, and we could afford to go, we want to bring it here. And so this is what happened. So between, uh, between 1990 and 1994, we were talking and organizing and planning, and um, Carol um, Clark, who is going to also talk about the reflections, was also one of our, of the team that started um, the AUC Skills Conference by then. Now, those of you who know me, you know that I'm very passionate about language testing and assessment. So you can guess what my role was since 1994 in the AUC Skills Conference. It was organizing something called the LTC, the Language Testing Program. And I organized it. Um, I did it, I don't know, let's not talk about years. I did it for 15 times. I organized the LT, LTC. And the reason I stopped it because I had this wonderful colleague um, Elizabeth Arigoni, who we affectionately refer to as Betsy. Betsy in 2010, Dina, do you, do you, I don't know how she put it, but at the end of the day, she offered to organize the Life Just Ecologia. Of course, doing something for 15 years, don't misunderstand me, I love doing it, but doing it for 15 times, I really wanted someone else to do it. And ever since then, uh, Betsy has been organizing the language testing colloquial, colloquial, uh, not colloquial, colloquial. And because I needed a break for that and a change, but what Betsy did was she changed the, colloquial, the language testing colloquial, and now she's broadened the young language testing, and I think it's a great thing that she has done. And the lucky thing is I am still involved in this colloquial as a discussant. So every year, so far, I have been uh, either a presenter or a discussant in the non-TESOL colloquium. What is very special about the language testing colloquium is the skills conference and the colloquium in the non-TESOL is that it is a closing session. And the format of the LTC, when I started, was we got all the plenary speakers that we're very honored to have um, our first plenary speaker today, and he will participate Inshallah, in the closing colloquium, Dr. J. And the, the, uh, um, the format of the colloquium is always as a very interactive discussion. And in fact, in one of the years, it was a very heated discussion when we had Barry Kevin Mulroney. I don't know if some of you who know him, he, was, he is from the UK, and he's totally against tests. So we had some testing people, and you had Mario, and it was a very interesting and heated debate. So this colloquium has been a key part of my life, organizing it year to year, and, and the format until today is this interesting discussion among intellectuals and professionals. And one of the lovely things that I remember, I'm going to go back in time and reflect a little bit, and Carol is going to um, fill in the blanks that I don't tell you because you know, Sometimes, in time, or one's memory does, does get affected. Um, what was the most interesting thing was I was involved in doing the language testing program with my colleagues and my friends. I will remember with great fondness and with great honor my teacher, my professor, Dr. Fred Perry. Um, he, he and I presented in the language testing program, and you have no idea how difficult it is for you to stand and present with your professor. I was shaking, shivering, not that I didn't know how to present, it was a uh, friend. And these are one of the, this is one of the memories I treasure and carry up here today. I also want to uh, thank and remember my mentor, Dr. Rosanne Muzayi, who is also a language testing expert, and she participated in many of the LTCs, and I want to thank her. And of course, my wonderful colleague, and his friend, uh, Dr. Ahmed Vidal, who is no longer a teacher, but he and I so much in um, the LTC. 
was assessing non-native speakers. He said, we have a teacher in English proficiency. You know, nowadays, we don't talk about non-native teacher anymore because we, can't, we don't know how to define it. We don't know what it is. What it is. What is the difference between how to define exactly what is a native, a non-native speaker? And so we, we stop even using this vocabulary. But it's interesting to see the changes from 2003 until today, 2016. Another title of the, uh, uh, our language testing colloquium was back in uh, 2005. It was titled from, object, from Objectives Oriented to a Standard-Based Approach, Where Are We? Now, back then, it was the whole issue of standards, and it was the latest terminology. Today, in assessment, we don't talk about that as much as we talk about learning-oriented assessment. So you see, our vocabulary has changed over the years, and it is marvelous for us, for those of us who attend, we just see the changes in the profession. It is a lifelong learning process, and indeed, we continue to learn, and I have always told you, as you have heard me repeat, that if one doesn't continue to grow, we become dinosaurs. And that is the worst thing to see is a T-cell dinosaur. And I hope, and I know, we have, there are none of you here that are T-cell dinosaurs because of the fact that you are here. But we see many of them, those of our colleagues who don't come and join us in this magical um, event. I'll close by saying that for me, TESOL International, the conference, and our NILO TESOL of the AUC PFL Skills Conference has always been interconnected. That is, whatever I learned in TESOL International, I would bring back to Egypt. But it also works the other way, that what we, we have our own uh, meaningful and wonderful research and practices here. And so whatever we did here in the we would go and showcase to the world in TESOL International. So I want to stress that please do work on your professional development. I know it's very expensive to travel to the United States or to the UK, which is the, there is another association called IATEFO. But believe me, the investment in your mind, in your career, is really worth it. And I know if, for me, when there is a will, there is a way you can do it. And it will make you much more powerful professionally. It will make you more powerful in your work. And you become a leader because of the knowledge and skills that you develop in these amazing and wonderful professional development events. Thank you for coming, and thank you, and thank you for allowing me to share my memories with you. And
because we changed from a December conference to a January conference. So that year we did have one. And then during the 2011 revolution, we also had to cancel the conference at the last minute because of people in the country. So this is actually the 20th um, annual conference. Um, during that 10, 22 year period of those 20 conferences, I've been able to attend most of the ABC skills and then the Nile TESOL conferences. Um, and I have, uh, I've made presentations, I have served on the organizing committee for 14 years until fairly recently. I was a, one of the founding members of the Nile TESOL board in 2008 09. And I've made a number of presentations, introduced speakers, and in the process, I've learned a great deal. Um, at the, the conference has endured all this time, largely to the efforts of the administrators, faculty, and staff of the School of Continuing Education, which she represents at ABC over the first 14 or 15 years. And more recently, with a much broader base of educators throughout Egypt as now TESOL was formed. And in reflecting on the origins and continuity of the, of the conference, I'd like to first acknowledge the fact that the conference was created, organized, and largely spearheaded by Dr. Christine Zander, uh, who created the conference with the help of, of professionals like Dina. Um, and it began with the idea that each year the, the team would focus on a different skill and would there, thereby develop the, the whole ELT community. So they started with writing, followed by reading, followed by listening, and followed by speaking um, for a number of years. And then suddenly um, the organizing committee realized the language is an integrated communication is integrated. We have to listen in order to speak and vice versa. So it became the Integrated Skills Conference. And then more recently, with the founding of Nile TESOL in 2009, it became the Nile TESOL Conference. So some of us still harking back to the old title. Um, in thinking about the history of this conference, I'd also like to acknowledge and extend deep appreciation to Mrs. Magda Lawrence, who, when Christine Zacher left in 1997, organized this conference for 12 years. Seemingly, effortlessly, and very easily, she and her ABC or her SCE staff made it seem very easy and effortless. But having participated in it, I know that it wasn't effortless at all. It required a huge amount of work and dedication. Um, from the staff and the faculty and many stakeholders throughout the university. During that time, Maggie was a tireless friend to countless members of the ELT community in Egypt and even internationally. As Dina has mentioned, she and Dina would go to TESOL conferences abroad and persuade plenary speakers, big names in the field, to come and see Egypt and, be, and speak at our conferences. Magda would also always make everybody very welcome at the conference, particularly um, members of the ELT community from the Ministry of Education and Higher Education. She would always um, network with publishers and sponsors to make sure that many, there are many resources were available during the conference. She even got someone to contribute free Coca-Cola to every member of the conference. I don't know if we still do that. Um, and she also established some of the protocols and practices that we still follow until today. And then I'd also like to acknowledge Dina and Magdalene's contributions in founding the Royal TESOL organization. They wanted to find, to extend the opportunities for organization and contribution to more than just the ABC community. So the Nile organization and board exists of more than just ABC um, faculty and staff, but also members of um, secondary schools and universities throughout Egypt. 
Um, as this health conference became more inclusive, at the time Egypt itself was undergoing rapid change, it's still finding its way in the conference. One of the nice things that has happened since Nile T. Salt um, was organized is that now the conference chairs rotate from year to year, and the presidents rotate from year to year. And that gives many opportunities for leadership. And I'm sure there are many potential leaders on the audience today. If you get involved in the organization, and I believe the annual business meeting is tomorrow, you yourself may have a chance not only to develop as a teacher and an educator, but also an educational leader. And I think this is one of the great changes that has been brought about by the Nile Salt Organization. For me, looking back at those 22 years, the 20 years of conferences, some of the more memorable highlights were some of the famous speakers. Uh, we had former AUC colleagues, such as Liz England and Gail Nelson, present at, as keynote speakers at the very first two conferences. And later, I found some very good friends and colleagues, Meredith Telti and Dr. Maha Saeed from Ben Laden Cairo Universities, also participated as keynote speakers. For me, also, some of the highlights, one of the highlights, was getting my very first presentation with a PowerPoint in 2003. And I had resisted that technology for a while, and then finding I could do it, using photographs, much like you see out here, was kind of a breakthrough for me, and I began to have more confidence in using PowerPoints in international conferences and with my students. So that was a great benefit. Other benefits have been, for example, um, attending presentations. And one of the more memorable ones for me was learning about the six plus one traits of writing at one of the um, presentations. And I later did much more investigation of this and began using analytic rules with my students to give them feedback and help shape their writing. And of course, over the years, there were disappointments. One year, we tried to have a, um, a distance video conference, and the technology didn't work. We couldn't hear each other. We couldn't hear the speakers in the States, and they couldn't hear us. But at least we were trying to learn, and we were trying new things, even if they didn't all work. One of the biggest delights for me was the opportunity um, while we were still on the old campus to introduce one of the plenary speakers, Scott Farnberg, who, who has since been back again as a plenary speaker. And in that introduction, I remembered when he, early in his career, um, taught in the ILI, in the Dean of Sahafi, and we were both um, young English teachers at the time, and I remembered listening to him teach. I was standing outside of his classroom, and as I listened to him, I felt that he was a real example of one level, someone to emulate. He had already really mastered excellent teaching at a very young age and stage of his career. And I think that's much what this conference is all about. It's about listening to each other, Sometimes in unexpected ways, unexpected conversations we may have, as well as in community talks, listening to the speaker, engaging in questions, and um, engaging in workshops. It's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to come together as a community of learners as well as of educators. And so I once again want to congratulate the current Loyalty Cell Board and all the conference organizers all the hardworking um, school of continuing education staff, and I wish each one of you a very successful and fulfilling conference. Um, and now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Rania Jung, who herself is a former um, uh, conference chair and um, a senior instructor to the Department of English Language Instruction. Today I feel like I'm 20 years old and this is my birthday. I have succeeded.
committed in attending and presenting at each and every knowledgeable conference for the past 20 years. And I'm very proud. I have learned so much. And I feel that a big part of me being an educator and a professional today is due to the fact that I have learned and I have experienced my artistic conference to the fullest. I remember when I first started, I, you know, there was a year on reading, a year on listening, and a year on writing. You know, I did, at the beginning I was a new teacher, I just graduated from my MA, and I, I presented, but I've learned so much. And I, one of the first things that I want to mention today as we celebrate this anniversary is the fact that I tell myself I feel like attending a conference is not a spectator sport. You have to go down and actually participate. Be proactive. Attend as many sessions as you can. Don't miss any of the community sessions or the events or the special uh, you know, presentations. Uh, if you're coming here with friends, divide up yourself and not all attend the same session. You know, divide up yourself and say, you know, you go to this one, I'll go to that one. Take a handout, share, and most important, to sit there and digest and learn. It's an experience, you know. I just want to share something with you. I was sitting in a cafe, I'm from Jordan. I was sitting in a cafe, one of the big malls there, having coffee, and somebody came up to me. He goes, hi, my name is John. And I'm like, hi. He said, I attended your presentation in Nanotiesel in Egypt. I'm like, wow. You know, when I go to Tiesel International, I go to Tiesel Arabia, I meet people that I've like, met here in Nanotiesel, and I've learned from their presentation, and they learned from my presentation, too. So I'm not going to, you know, talk for a long time to get started, but I just want to say, make use of this wonderful, valuable opportunity, and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bore and Ms. Clark and Ms. Jabber for those wonderful memories. Now I'd like to invite my Magni, co-chair of the 2016 Nile TESOL Conference. Thank you. Um, distinguished speakers, um, colleagues, fellow Nile TESOL members and conference attendees, Good morning. On behalf of the organizing committee, um, Alex and I would like to welcome you and to thank you all for joining us at the 20th annual Nile TESOL conference here at the AUC. I'm so proud to be here to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Nile TESOL conference. These 20 years have been a long, fruitful journey of enlightenment, knowledge, and development. The conference is also a great opportunity to come together to enjoy the continual success of the Nile TESOL conference, which has evolved and developed through the participation of ELT professionals from local and from all over the world. The non and the non-stop efforts of everyone who has been in charge of this conference. It is so enthralling to have presenters from Egypt, Mexico, the United Arab Emirates, Greece, the United Kingdom, Algeria, Canada, Oman, Indonesia, Cyprus, the United States of America, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, who have come to share their best practices in TESOL. I'm greatly honored to have you and to be part of such a prestigious, empowering conference, which contributes to our field of TESOL. Welcome. Welcome to all of you. This year's conference has an action-packed, varied program, and I hope you'll be able to avail yourselves of the so many opportunities offered. We're very privileged to have four highly distinguished plenary speakers. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Andy Curtis, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Jerry Gebhardt, Dr. Nadia Tuba and Dr. Lin Ching, who has graciously accepted to give a plenary speech instead of Dr. Barry O'Sullivan, who unfortunately fell sick and we wish him speedy recovery. 
In addition to more than 110 concurrent presentations and workshops, we're offering a conference colloquium on English as a global language, which is something that's being discussed a lot nowadays. And three panel discussions, which are communicative language teaching with large classes. Um, is, it too ev is it ever early to teach academic integrity? Um, developing reflective practice in learning and teaching. We've got five events, which are 20 by 20, e-community, teaching without tech and post a session event. And we're glad to introduce for the first time, the chat show in which Dr. Andy Curtis will share his unique experiences with us. I would like to invite you to look through the program book in order to know all the interesting beneficial sessions and events we are having this year. Alex and I would like to give special thanks to all those who have been working diligently behind the scenes to make this conference happen. First, I'd like to thank SCE, the School of Continuing Education, for their logistical help, most especially the SCE Dean, Dr. Dina Borai, for all her support and continuous encouragement. Ms. Hanan Ferris, Ms. Ibtihel Al Badri, Ms. Hala Durgham, and Ms. Mona Sayed for their unflagging efforts. It has been such a great pleasure working with you to put this conference together. Thank you, SCE. We'd like also to thank the organizing committee for all their variable, valuable contributions of ideas, efforts, and time. We were very blessed to have such a very dedicated, cooperative, hardworking team who has got a great sense of collaboration. Hearty thanks to all of you. In specific, special thanks goes to, to the past years <laughs> co-chairs, uh, Suzanne Rizzo and Heba Fathil Bey. Heba, thank you so much. Um, they have helped us a lot um, throughout all the organizing stages of this year's conference. We appreciate Dr. Mariam Osman's um, effort in helping to coordinate the proposal review and her convivial uh, encouragement. A lot of gratitude goes to the coordinators of this year's special events. E-community, Heba Fath Halbeb, who has also contributed to the pre-conference pre-D events. 20 by 20, Rania Job, who has also helped to coordinate the proposal review. Teaching without tech, Suzanne Rizzo, who has also contributed to the pre-conference PD events. Post this session, Amira Salema, who will be <laughs> the, coming, the incoming president, who has provided the needed tech support to publicize the conference on the nilediesel.org website and the Facebook page. And has also contributed to the pre-conference uh, PD events. Panel discussions uh, were prepared by um, Elizabeth Aragoni and Mariah Furley, chat show Dr. Ma Hamid and Susan Isnawi, um, colloquium also Elizabeth Aragoni. Now I would like to introduce a special member of this year's organizing committee, Susan Isnawi, who has kindly accepted the task of becoming next year's conference, co conf conference chair. <laughs> next, we would like to thank our lovely board of directors for all their support and suggestions to help the conference to become much better every year. Your assistance is always precious to the conference's ongoing development. We are extremely grateful to Dr. Maryam Osman, the current Nile Tisa president, for all her help, guidance and efforts. In addition, many thanks go to Dr. Marilyn Plumley, the past Nile Tisa president, for her numerous contributions and insights. We would like to thank the British Council, the American Regional Language Office, RELO, and Amidis for their generous contributions and constant support to Nile TESOL. We really appreciate the numerous professional development opportunities they have provided us with. Moreover, we would like to thank our generous sponsors, not only for their financial support, uh, lovely booths and displays, but also for sharing their invaluable expertise in the presentations and workshops they are offering this year. These highly appreciated and esteemed sponsors and partners are Cambridge University Press, IDP Education IELTS, the International Language Bookshop, ILB, Macmillan Egypt, Oxford University Press, Leaders, Nahdit Moss Pearson, Middle East Group, Cairo Book, 
Centre, Alex Book Centre, RELO, Amides and the British Council. We would also like to thank the Academy of Liberal Arts Dean Dr Robert Switzer for his support and encouragement, the Department of English Language Instruction, the School of Humanities and Social Sciences Dean Nathan Bautich and the Language the Department of Applied Linguistics at the American University in Cairo. Finally, we'd like to thank the AUC for, and its supporting offices, including the Transportation Office, for allowing us to use their premises and facilities, and the CTMS Classroom Technologies and Media Services for their technical support. Many thanks to all of you. We wish you a wonderful, informative, unforgettable conference experience that all of you will remember for years to come. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mike. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Alexander Luco, co-chair of the 2016 ILTSA conference, to provide some information about conference logistics. Okay. So uh, on behalf of the committee, again, I would like to thank uh, all of you for being here today. This is a wonderful occasion, but I will do what I can to keep this very short and sweet so we can uh, get into the conference. And I'm having some problems here. Oh. OK, it's working. OK, good. So this is going to be, excuse me, a, logist, a brief logistics speech, I hope brief. Um, I'm just going to go over a few of the major things, the uh, plenary speakers, special events, and announcements. Now, the plenary speakers, uh, this information is in the program book, but just to go over what will happen, Dr. Jerry Gebhardt will be following this opening ceremony, and his workshop will be tomorrow at 10. Dr. Andy Curtis will be giving his plenary talk um, today at 2 o'clock, and his workshop will follow directly after. Dr. Leanne Chain will be giving her plenary talk uh, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, again, in place of Dr. O'Sullivan, who we hope gets better, but thank you, Dr. Ling, for being willing to give the talk, and her workshop will be featured at the uh, T Special Interest Group today. And then finally, last but not least, Dr. Nadia Tuba will give a workshop today at 11, and then she will give her plenary talk tomorrow after the General Assembly. So with the special events, most of these are very familiar and I'll go over them very briefly. The colloquium will be tomorrow at 3 after Dr. Nadia's plenary address. And this is very important to go to for all, uh, for the, the information on English as a global language. There will be three panel discussions. Two of them are today. Is it ever too early to teach academic integrity at 3? And then communicative language teaching with large class sizes at 4. Uh, there will be one tomorrow, developing reflective practice and learning and teaching. Poster session will be later today at 1 o'clock in the SSE building. Teaching without tech will also be today in C118 Hatem at 3 o'clock. And e-community will be in the computer labs at the library at 4 o'clock today. 20 by 20 presentations of speedy, quick presentations that will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. We are excited to have the chat show, which is a new event that we are starting off this year and Dr. Andy Curtis will be at, and this will be at 10 a.m. tomorrow. The, teach, the testing evaluation and assessment SIG will be today at noon. And then the General Assembly, which we all encourage, we encourage all Nile TESOL members to go to, will be tomorrow at 1 o'clock to talk about old business from 2015, new business for 2016, and to elect new officers, and it will be right here. Now, some announcements. There, are, there is a Nile TESOL information booth in the, uh, it's, it's in the sports area where registration is if you have questions. There are wonderful ushers with those nice yellow vests. I want one of those in the blue scarves. They are here to answer for any of the questions that you have. Um, the exhibitors, the wonderful publishers we have, they're in the sports area and registration will continue after the plenary talk. Um, we do have Wi-Fi. If you select guest Wi-Fi, I was told that instructions will appear for you to get a password through your mobile and it will work for eight hours. Uh, for those of us presenting, we have uh, tech support if we need it. There is on all the po podiums in the classrooms a CTMS helpline if you need help, but please try to go to the ushers first. 
The other thing to remember is that podiums now need logins. Hopefully all of them will be logged into. The ushers know the passwords. So if, the po if you go to use a podium for one of your presentations and it is logged out, try to find the local usher in your area and he or she can help you get in. And then concurrent sessions, there is a map in your book, but the concur concurrent sessions happen in Hatem in the SSE building. Tomorrow, only Jamil as well. Um, and then the library labs will be used and the conference center, which is this big building here, will be used. It's all in your maps. Now, please look in detail in your program book. There are some three things I would like to bring up. There is a Meet the British Council team events going on throughout the conference, and those are scheduled between today and tomorrow. Uh, the ILACE conference is coming up later this year, the International Language Assessment Conference in Egypt. Their call for proposals is due the 1st of April. And we are very excited to uh, tell everybody that we will have proceedings for 2015 and 2016 Nile TESOL conferences. And that will be due May 1st. There is more information in the program book. Social media, uh, we have a hashtag, Nile TESOL 2016, for Twitter and Facebook for you to discuss everything about the conference. One correction um, in the program book, session 50, which is at 3 o'clock today, um, is peer observation, a catalyst for better teaching. Uh, Dr. Hala El Shawarbi is the presenter, but there is a second presenter, Camilla Helmy, who we unfortunately left out of the program book. So she is the co-presenter, and you should have gotten a correction slip with your program book. We do have three cancellations. They're all at noon, session number 23, which is in C122 Hatem, the, the Magic of Metacognition. Session 25, which was also in Hatem, including learners with special educational needs. And then finally, again, because Dr. O'Sullivan is, is, is sick and couldn't come, his workshop at noon is also canceled. Now, with buses, two more important slides, and I'm gone, I promise, so we can enjoy the conference. First is that the, pres the, the uh, conference goes until 445, but only certain bus routes have a 515 bus. We hope everybody stays until 445 because we have wonderful presentations from 4 to 445. So the bus routes that do leave at 515 are the, f are the oh, is it, did that not advance? Okay, something's wrong here. Um, okay, the slides didn't advance. I didn't realize this. Okay, so I'm going to read off the buses that do leave at 515. It would be the R1 Mahdi route, the R5 Heliopolis route, the R6 Nasser City route, the R9 Zamalek and Aguza route, the R10 Doe route, and the R12 Downtown Tahrir route. So please think of those routes and which one is closest to where you live and do take one of those routes to eventually get home. We do hope everybody stays until 445. And finally, with conference tips, Rania gave very good conference tips. I'd like to add one more with arriving and leaving presentations. If you, hopefully we can all get to presentations on time and leave when, when they're, once they're done. But if you have to come late or leave early, please just do so quietly for the presenter. The final thing is we all know that we've gone over for the opening ceremony and we have a wonderful plenary speech that we all would like to hear from. What we request is that for those of you presenting at 11, if you can try and move to the aisle so you can excuse yourself early, and then those of us who are here for the wonderful plenary speech we're about to have, please stay for the whole speech and then uh, leave once it is over. And then those who are going at 11, if you can just wait about 10 minutes extra just for everybody to come, and then you can give your presentations and hopefully by noon we're on time with the schedule. So that is all I have to say. Um, I want to thank you for all, uh, all of you for coming and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Now we're going to go right into our first plenary speech. So this is our, the closing of our opening ceremony. Thank you to all of our speakers. I'd like to invite now Dr. Ruth Petzl, the U.S. Embassy's Regional English Language Officer for Egypt, Suzanne, and Saudi Arabia. She will close this opening ceremony with some remarks and introduce our first plenary speaker, Dr. Jerry Gebhardt. <laughs> 